Today we are reviewing the Little Crochet Pals crochet kits from Loops and Threads, so please stick around! Hi friends! My name is Claire and this is my channel, Witcha Theory! Here, I make content about what it is like to live as an adult on the autism spectrum and whatever else feels good to me. So if that sounds good to you, or if you're feeling particularly gracious today, and I hope that you are, please go ahead and click the subscribe button. Ring the bell. I almost forgot to mention that I put out videos three times a week and it's, uh, a lot of yarn content, so if you like that, then you're in the right place. Took my glasses off, there was a glare. So when I started my channel last year, one of the first videos that I made was reviewing the Little Crochet Friends crochet kit, the Rabbit, and it has been one of my most popular videos. Unfortunately, it wasn't a positive experience and it wasn't a tutorial. It was a review on was the kit really that bad because it had one star reviews on the website. It was that bad and it wasn't very fun to make. <laughs> the instructions were all messed up. The hook was terrible. It just wasn't good. So I'll put that up here if you want to check it out. The biggest comment that I got for that video was, I wish that you would do a tutorial on how to make this because I'm a new crocheter and I am lost on how to get started. So what I thought I'd do today is just give you a quick review of the Crochet Pals kit that I made, Little Crochet Pals. And then at the end of the video, I will add in a crochet along for the body of the Crochet Pals. The reason I'm doing this is all of the Little Crochet Pals that they put out this year have the same body. It's basically an egg that you stuff. So I thought it would be a good way to show you all of the techniques that you'll need to make the kit without giving you the pattern, because it's not my pattern, please buy it, and without showing you how to do the entire thing and possibly getting in trouble from Michaels. So I will put right here where the tutorial starts. So if you need help with that, how to get started, go ahead and click on that time. So I'm pleased to say, I believe that Michaels, Loops and Threads, really listened to us from last year because the last year's kits were a disaster. This kit, they made a few simple changes and it was so much better. I would give this kit four and a half out of five stars and I'm just pleased that it seems like they listened to the reviews. The last kit had terrible instructions. They weren't worded very well and they had mixed the English and the French instructions together and the way they had printed them up made very little sense, especially if you had never read a crochet pattern before and it was marketed to beginners, so ugh. This year, it came with two sets of instructions, one in French, one in English. All on one page, very easy to read, so impressed. The other problem that we had last year was the hook that it came with was very weak. This year, it seems like it's improved. Is it the best hook? No. Would I suggest using another number four hook if you have one? Yes. But in general, it's a big improvement and I use the hook for the tutorial just so that I was on the same page with everyone and it wasn't the worst experience. Like it was, last year it was like trying to crochet with a piece of wet spaghetti. It was terrible. The other thing that it came with was a yarn needle and I it did bend. So it wasn't, wasn't the best yarn needle, but it was workable. 
So that's why I gave it, I'd give it a 4.5 stars because overall, much, much better. It could improve on the crochet hook, but I'm not mad. And it had kind of a flimsy yarn needle. So impressed. Thanks, Michaels. Way to go. I feel like it came out okay. I'm not an amigurumi expert or anything, but I think they look similar. And I was able to follow the directions well. I mean, it's basically a potato with ears, right? This little birdie. But I thought it would be fun for spring. So yeah, in general, everything improved this year. I would definitely recommend that you purchase the Little Crochet Pals. Do I think it's a little expensive? It's $7.99 US. With the normal 20% coupon that you could get from Michael's, 40% uh, coupon, it makes it doable. Uh, if you don't have any of the yarn or crochet hooks, then this would be a good starting point to see if you'd like crochet. Um, yeah, I'm happy with it. What I'll do now is switch over to me just doing the body. So no matter which one you buy, you'll be able to follow along for the body. And everything that you use for the body, all of the techniques, is basically what you're using for the rest of the pieces. So you should be all set. All right, let's get started. Uh, thank you for watching my video. Please go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. It really helps me out. And I'll insert the tutorial here. Thanks, guys. Also want to mention, I crochet left-handed. And... I know most people crochet right-handed. So what I would suggest is if I mention a term in the video that you're not sure of, for example, magic loop, single crochet, double crochet, what have you, and you're confused on how I'm doing it, go ahead and look up on YouTube how to do that stitch right-handed and that will really help. So it says round one, with brown, make an adjustable ring and work six single crochet into the ring. Do not join. Place a marker to indicate the beginning of the ring. All right, just like last time, there are no markers, but there's probably a note that says to use a scrap piece of yarn for the ring. I will go ahead and use the markers that I have just to keep it easier for myself. So it does say make an adjustable ring. So in crochet, we would normally call this magic loop. Get your ray gun ready. Then lie the yarn over your fingers with the loose end facing you. Wrap it around your fingers, create an X, and then you can hold the X back there with your other fingers. All right, so there is the beginning of your adjustable ring or as we'd call it a magic loop. So to create the magic loop, you're going to go under this first half of the X here, pull the second part of the X through. Then you're going to turn your hand and take the second strand of yarn there and then pull it through this loop. It's a little fiddly when you're working with something small. So what you're left with is a circle with a loose end. You might have to unravel the loose end just to make sure it's loose. But when you pull this loose end, you can make the circle bigger or smaller. Now you're gonna go ahead and do six single crochets into the loop. So one, right through the loop, pull up, pull through. So that's one, two, right through the loop, pull up, pull through, three, right through the loop, 
pull up, pull through, and three more. Right through the loop, pull up, pull through, through the loop, pull up, pull through, one more, through the loop, pull up, whoop, don't panic if you drop it, you haven't ruined it, through the loop, pull up, pull through. So I just did six single crochets through the loop. We can count them, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then we're going to pull this short end to make our magic loop or adjustable ring. And right there, that's gonna be the top or bottom half of the body. See how we have the ring formed there? Great work. I'm just gonna grab a stitch marker for us because it says, do not join, place the marker to indicate the beginning of the round. We're ready for our second row. So we just finished the magic loop with six single crochets. So it's saying to go into the first crochet, single crochet here, make one, and then go back into that same single crochet and make another crochet. So all the way around in each stitch, you're gonna put two single crochets. And if this is too fast, please go ahead and you can pause the video or you can slow down the speed. All right, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12. Now you may notice that this ring here in the middle isn't tight, but you can always pull on this strand again and make the ring tighter later on. For the next round, we're gonna move our stitch marker so we know where the start of the round is. If you've crocheted a lot, you might not need the stitch marker, but just for the, this case, we'll use the stitch marker. So we're starting the next round and it's single crochet into the next stitch and then two single crochet in the next stitch all around. So all we're doing is putting one single crochet into the first stitch, and then two in the next. One, second one in the same stitch. Then one crochet in the next stitch. Then two in the next one. One, two, one, two in the next one, one, two, Two. Now we've come to the end of the row, so we can move our stitch marker to the start of a new row. All right, so that's the end of row three, and now you should have 18 stitches. 
So to start round four, you'll do two single crochet in the next single crochet, single crochet in the next two. So we'll start with two here, one, two, and then single crochet in the next two. I'm just going to repeat this pattern all the way around. So one crochet, one crochet, and then two crochet. One crochet, one crochet, two crochet. You know what I thought as well, if you didn't want to make a bird but you wanted to just follow along with me and make like an Easter egg, that might be fun. So I just did two. Alright, so that should have us back around so we can move our stitch marker. Again, if you have crochet before, you might not need the stitch marker, but it does help you keep track, make it easier for you. Round five. Single crochet in the next five, and then two single crochet in the next. So we'll do five single crochet, then when we get to the sixth stitch, we'll do two and we should end up with 28 stitches after that. One, two, three, four, five. Five, and then we'll do two in the next stitch, in the sixth stitch. One, two. Then five. One, two, three, four, five. And two in the next. Five, only two in the last. Now we've reached the end of row five. We have 28 stitches. We can move our stitch marker. And you can kind of see the little top of a head forming. Now for rows six through eight, so for the next three rows, we'll just do a single crochet in every stitch. So we'll do a single crochet in every stitch, move your stitch marker. Single crochet in every stitch, move your stitch marker. Single crochet in every stitch, move your stitch marker. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Pause the video and I will be right back with you. So I'm back. I just finished round eight and I moved my stitch marker. So we're about to start round nine. So as you can see right now we've got a little round top going on. Round nine, single crochet into the next six, two single crochet, 
in the next stitch. So six single crochet, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then in the seventh, two crochets in that stitch. One, two. Now six again. One, two, And then the last one is two. Then we're going to move our stitch marker so we know where the first stitch is in the round. Don't panic if you notice that things are starting to curve. That means you're doing it correctly. So for rounds 10 through 12, just like round 6 through 8, I'm just going to do three rounds of single crochet. So I'm going to do a round of single crochet, move the stitch marker. Do a round of single crochet, move the stitch marker. Do a round of single crochet, move the stitch marker. And now I should have 32 uh, stitches in each row. So I'll go ahead and do that and then I will meet you back. For row 13, they're having you do two crochets into the first stitch. and then seven single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and then repeat so two crochets into the next stitch and then seven single crochets one, one. All right, now you're going to do rows 14 through 16. So for the next three rows, you're just going to do single crochets. So single crochet, row 14, move your marker. Single crochet 15, move your marker. Single crochet row 16, move your marker. And then I will meet you back for row 17. We just finished rows 14, 15, 16, which were just single crochets all around. Now we are starting row 17, and this is where 
we start the decrease rows. So we've built up the body. Now we have to finish up the body and kind of close it up. So the first thing we're going to do in row 17 is stitch two together. Don't panic, it's not as hard as it sounds. So to stitch two together, you're going to go through your first stitch, pull up the loop. Keep that loop there. Go through your second stitch, pull up the loop. Then you're going to pull through all three loops that are on the hook. There you have it, you've just stitched two together. Then you're going to do single crochet in the next seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you're going to single crochet two together. So you're going to pull up a loop through the next stitch, leave that on there, and pull up a loop through the next stitch. You should have three loops on your hook. Pull through all of them. You've just stitched two together. Now seven single crochet. You've come to the end of the round, so you'll move your crochet hook. I mean, you'll move your stitch marker up the row so you know where to start. The next row is 18. It's single crochet in each stitch. So I'll go ahead and do a single crochet in each stitch, move my marker, and then meet you back. I just finished round 18. I single crocheted all around and then moved the stitch marker. Row 19 single crochet into the first two stitches and you know how to do that already that's easy that's easy for you you're a crochet master now also i should mention i've been crocheting for over a year now so if you're struggling that's completely normal and fine if this turns out looking not so great just chalk it up to experience you're learning a new skill you've got this two single crochet stitches, so one, two, and then single crochet two together. So just like in row 17, I'm going to pull up a loop through one stitch, pull up a loop through the next stitch, so I've got three stitches on my hook, and I'm going to pull through all three stitches. Then single crochet, single crochet, then crochet two together. So pull up through one, pull up through two. I've got three on my hook. Pull through all three loops. Then single crochet, single crochet, and then stitch two together. So pull up through the first, pull up through the second, you got three loops, pull through all three. Then two single crochet, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Single 
Uh, one, uh, three, second, we got three loops. Go through all three. Single crochet in the next. Single crochet in the next. Stitch two together. Pull up one. Pull up two. Stitch two all three. Pull through all three. And then I think that's supposed to be the end of the row. So I may have missed one. All right, so it looks like I ended with an extra stitch, which is fine, I think, in this case. I'm just gonna do a single crochet in that stitch. Then I'm gonna move my stitch marker. See, not even I am perfect, but I don't think it's gonna make that much of a difference. So for the next round, I'm just going to do a single crochet in each stitch, and then I will meet you back. So row 20 is single crochet in each stitch and move the stitch marker. I've just completed round 20. I single crocheted in each stitch and then moved my stitch marker. Now we'll go on to row 21. I have a single crochet in the first stitch, then crochet two together and then repeat. So just a single crochet pull up through the first, pull up through the second, and then all three stitches together. Single crochet. Pull up one, pull up through the next, you've got three loops, all together. It does get a little bit tricky as you go, so, you know, however you need to move it to make it easier for yourself. Pull up one, pull up the next, you've got three loops all together. And that should have you around to the end of your 21st row. And you should have, I believe, 16 stitches left. Row 22. We'll move the stitch marker. Oh, that's hard. Okay. So for row 22, we're just going to go around and do a single crochet in each stitch. And I won't pause right now because it's only a few. So just a single crochet all the way around. I was thinking if you didn't want to do this entire little birdie, little robin, you could uh, just make the body in brown. Then it could either be a potato or a brown egg. We found it a potato though. So you're just doing single crochet all the way around. You kind of just turn it as you go. How do you need to turn it to see your stitches? One more. So I've come to the end of the row. And at this point, I only have one more row left to stitch. So I will just take the stitch marker out. And I have this little body shape. And at this point, they're asking me to stuff the piece with polyester stuffing, shaping the piece like an egg. So if you're worried you're going to lose your last stitch, what I would do is just for now, pull up this stitch pretty far. And then when you're stuffing it, you're not going to lose your stitch. It does come with some polyfill. Way, way, way more than you need. You can probably make a few birds with this. So you're just going to go ahead and stuff. So 
So, so far, I would say yes, this is an easy amigurumi to start with. The instructions, super clear. Way better than last year's Little Crochet Friends disaster. Everything is just better. So in my mind, we have absolutely improved, Michaels. Thank you so much. Doesn't really say how much you're supposed to put in, but I would just make it as firm as you'd like it. How are we doing? Look, we're getting the shape. I think that's pretty egg-ish, perhaps. I'm trying to look at the picture. Maybe a little more in the bottom. All right, so we've stuffed, and now we'll complete our last crochet row. You did it, guys. I'm so proud of you. All right, so we've shaped the piece like an egg. Now we're going to stitch two together all around, and then slip stitch in the next stitch, leaving an eight inch tail. Pull the loop back down. So that's where you'll be starting from. And we're back on the hook. Now for our final row, it just says to stitch two together all the way around. So pull up a loop, pull up a loop in the next one, pull through all three. Pull up a loop, pull up a loop in the next one, pull through all three. As it gets smaller, it's going to get a little trickier, but don't give up. We're almost there. Might have to kind of angle your hook up. Pull up a loop. Pull up a loop. Pull through all three. Pull up a loop. Pull up a loop. Pull through all three. Pull up a loop, pull up a loop, pull through all three, pull up a loop, pull up a loop, pull through our pull through all three. And we got the one more. One two, pull through all three, and it says you should be left with eight stitches. I think we've got eight. So it's saying that for the final, you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch, and that just closes off the yarn for us. You'll have a little hole in the bottom, don't freak out. So slip stitch just means we pull up a loop through the next stitch, and then pull through the first loop, okay? Then it says to leave, an eight inch tail, then you'll pull through. So right now what you should have is a brown egg with two strands, one on the top and one on the bottom. You'll get your knot 
yarn needle out on the bottom. And if there's a little hole there, that's fine. You're just going to weave through each stitch, go through and under all of them. Now we pull, should see that little hole close. Great. So I'm gonna make a little knot here. Now what I'll do to hide the end is I'm just gonna poke the needle all the way through, pull it out the top, and then snip that yarn. Careful not to snip the wrong one. And that should be hidden forever. Now we'll do the same thing on the top. Go all the way around one more time through the loops and then pull through the bottom. So sorry, dear friends, my camera died. I was just about finished. So I just took the string on the top and then I poked it all the way through, down through the bottom, and then trimmed off that string. So it should be hidden in there forever now. And that is how you do the body on the little crochet pals. It should stand up. You can work on the shape. Or just keep it like that and let it be a potato. But now you've got the body or base for all of the little crochet pals and you have a starting point to finish the rest of them. So I'm going to finish this and check back with you. I will say great job Michaels. The kit is better this year. So thank you. I hope you guys found this helpful.